wants to bless you. And you should have an attitude of saying, Lord, I thank you for the blessings you've given me. Oh, no. And I thank you for the blessings to come. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you are doing and I thank you for what you're going to do in the future. I may not see it right now, but I thank you that my ship is coming in. I thank you that you're going to bless me in my coming in and my going out. When I lick it up and when I lay down at night, I know you're going to bless me. Huh. It's God's will. It's God's will. For you to be blessed in every aspect of your life. And she looks for an answer. She doesn't know what to do, and so she finds the man of God. Huh. Let me help you with this. You don't need to run around asking people for advice. Alone. When you've got the creator of the worlds at your disposal. You don't need to seek me out and say, I'm having a problem. I can't help you. No. I can only point you to the one that can. But it's time for you to get down on your knees and say, God, I'm, I'm asking for help. I don't know what else to do. But I know that you can help me in my time of need. Oh, no. Go to God. Yeah. Go to the Lord. He's got a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all the gold and the silver underneath it. He owns the gasoline underneath it. He owns the pride of jewels and the precious metals underneath it. What are, you, what, are, what are you saying? I'm saying he's got everything that you need ready to bless you with it. Whatever you need. And the prophet looks at her. Says, what can I do for you? What do you have in your house? He was speaking then of the physical home, a natural domicile, a natural place where you lay your head down at night. Mm -hmm. But now the Holy Spirit's asking you, what do you have in your house? Not your physical house, but right here, Paul says that you are the temple of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. What is in your house? I'm asking you, what's in your house? You don't have to answer me now, but look down deep inside and answer you yourself. What's in your house? What's in your house? What's in your house? And the woman says, I don't have anything except a small pot of oil. That's all I have is a pot of oil. Oil is a type of the Holy Ghost. If you've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, that's more than enough that you'll ever need. You see, too many Christians, we ignore the pot of oil. And we try to grasp for whatever it is that's out there. Alone. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit literally comes in and takes up residence inside of you. Jesus said that I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter that he shall be with you and shall be what? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, church, shall be what? Yeah. In you. He takes up residence. That's the pot of oil. Oil is a symbol yeah. of the Holy Spirit. And too many of us ignore the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And we're yeah. trying to reach for whatever else. But yeah. when the Holy Spirit comes in at salvation, that's for regeneration. Some people say that's all the Holy Spirit that you need. Uh-uh, no, I beg to differ. Huh. There's a whole lot more of the Holy Spirit that we need. And what I'm going to talk about now is something that we all need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got the Holy Spirit for regeneration? But you got to take it a step further. Because once you get saved, there's something greater called the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues that's meant for power. Power, power, power. Paul said the same power that lives on science 
inside of you is the same power that rose Jesus from the grave. Oh. You talk about a power. What kind of power? Huh. A power greater than alcohol. Yeah. A power greater than oppression. A power greater than depression. A power greater than sin. A power greater than sickness. A power greater than disease. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us this power. Or Jesus gives us this power. It is given to us as a gift to do and to believe for great and mighty things. Mm -hmm. This power is used to help turn a world right side up. Wow. If God can take just 12 men or little more or so and turn a world right side up in the New Testament, what do you think he can do right now? What do you think he can do right now? I'm asking what is in your house? If you've got the pot of oil, huh? That's power. 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 You shall receive power. Miracle working power. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Power. She said, All I've got is this pot of oil. He says, here what I want you to do. Go home. Get to your neighbor's homes. Knock on the door. And borrow vessels. Full, empty. It doesn't matter. Borrow some vessels. But don't settle and borrow just a couple. But borrow not a few. You see, the problem with much of the church world is that we limit God. Yeah. We limit what God can do. Or we settle. I've, I've mentioned this any number of times, and forgive me, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that you would get this. As a church and as a believer, don't settle for something small. No. Start asking God. Borrow vessels and borrow not a few. Start claiming the impossible. Start asking for the impossible. Start believing for the impossible. Don't limit God. Oh, I wish I could just, I'm not saying it right. As a child of God, don't settle for less than what God wants to give you. But start claiming it and asking him and believing God for the absolute impossible. That whatever you need, borrow vessels and borrow not a few. Go to your neighbors, he said. Knock on the door and get all the pots that they have and that they'll lend you. And if you got to dump them out, dump them out. Mm -hmm. it means this, the Lord has to dump out some stuff in your life. And he has to fill it up with more of him. He's got to get rid of self. He's got to get rid of pride. He's got to get rid of this, that, and the other. And he wants to fill you with more of his spirit. I remember this story was told. And I don't know, I probably was not there. More than likely I wasn't there. It probably happened maybe before I was born. Hmm. But maybe it was after, I don't know. But it was maybe during a crusade and there was... A lady, a young lady that was coming to seek the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And wow. she was standing right there on, on the altar and asking God to believe God for to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And these two elderly grandmothers, I'm talking about grandmother grandmothers, <laughs> bobby pins in their hairs. I'm talking Pentecostal grandmothers. That means whenever something happened, the Spirit of God began to move, they would do the jerk, and they, I mean, <laughs> bobby <laughs> pins would start flying out. <laughs> And one went on one side and one went on the other. And one was saying, Lord, empty her. And the other was saying, Lord, fill her up. Lord, empty her. Lord, fill her up. Lord, empty her. Lord, fill her up. That's what you've got to do. Lord, empty me and fill me up with more of your spirit. He said, borrow not a few. Don't settle. But believe God. That he's mm. going to do some great things. Yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago in Crossfire, 
on a Wednesday night, there was a message in tongues and interpretation. The message was given, the interpretation was given by Brother Bob Cornell, and that interpretation was this, it was twofold. It said this, my word will not return void. That what I told you, I will do it. Now, I want you to get that. He said, my word will not return void, but I will do what I told you I would do. Then the second part was this. Your eyes will see it. 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 What are you saying? I'm not settling, but I'm believing God for the greatest move of his spirit the world has ever seen. I believe it. That one of these days in this hour, I don't know when it's going to happen, but there's going to be traffic on Blue Bonnet Boulevard. Going this way and coming that way. All trying to get here. All trying to get here because they've heard of something happening at Family Worship Center. They've heard of something taking place at Family Worship Center. They have they have heard that souls are being saved, lives are being changed, believers filled with the Holy Spirit. But they're also hearing that they're bringing them in by wheelchairs, on stretchers, but they ain't leaving in a wheelchair on a stretcher, but they're moving out, stepping and walking by the power of Almighty God. I believe they're going to come in blind, can't see, but all of a sudden, eyes will be opened and they're going to see this is what I'm, I'm talking about, a great move of God that's coming. I'm not settling, but our eyes will see it. Our eyes will see it. Our eyes are going to see it. The blinded eyes open, deaf ears unstopped. The lame begin to walk, and the dead raised by the power of Almighty God. I'm barring vessels, but I'm not barring a few. I believe in God for the impossible. Wow. I say this because we've got to have your faith to do it. Mm -hmm. We've got to have your faith to do it. If you don't believe this, I pray to God after today, you are to start believing it. Because God wants to do some great things here. He wants to do some great things. He's telling you here today, don't borrow vessels. Borrow not a few, but get as many of them as you can. Start seeking and asking. And believe in God for the impossible. And what that word was saying, he said, my word will not return void, but it will do what it set out to do. And your eyes shall see it. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. I believe God's going to show up. I believe God's going to do something powerful. I believe God's going to do something great. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I look at the world and they may say, I don't believe it. But I do. I serve a God of the impossibilities. I serve a God that's able to do what we need him to do. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I feel like something good is on its way. It's right around the corner. God's about ready to pour it out. He's given us mercy drops here and there, but he's about ready to pour it out the lights that we've never seen. I'm barring vessels, and I'm barring not a few. I'm not settling. I'm not settling, but I'm asking God to do the impossible. I'm believing God to do the impossible. I'm believing God to do the impossible. I'm believing God to do what he said he would do. And we as a church don't need to settle. But we need to believe him for something great. Believe him. She could have sat there and said, well, prophet, you're crazy. Huh. I'm not doing that. But she took it on faith. She took it on faith. Faith is the currency that pays in heaven. That's what I'm asking you to do today. Faith. I'm asking you to believe. Don't settle. But I'm asking him and I'm 
asking you to believe with us to touch this world one more time. Barring vessels. Oh, I got to hurry. Bar not a few. No matter who you are, but get as much as you can. Start believing him for as much as you can.